Hello guys and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Katherine and I'm currently a third year PhD student studying history at Ohio State University, The Ohio State University. And today I'm gonna do a little planning session. So I thought I would show you guys my Notion and how I use it. I've had Notion for about two years now and I have had varied success with it, but I think I have finally found recently a system that works best for me. I want to say up at the top that I don't use Notion for everything. I don't take my class notes, well I don't have class anymore, but I don't take my reading notes within Notion. I take them within OneNote. And then I think a lot of people use Google Calendar just in general, and then they link it up within their Notion, but I use Apple Calendar, iCal, which is just what works best with me. And so I use a bunch of different systems. So I don't have everything in Notion, but I do use it for a lot of other things. So let me start screen recording on my computer and get into the video. Okay, so to start out, I have a kind of mix of templates that I use. So my kind of homepage is based off of a compilation of many different Kaylin Apple templates with the Redhead Academic. I know she's had a lot of different templates over the years and I've kind of melded them all into one. Okay, for starters, we're gonna go on my daily dashboard, which is the thing that I reference every day. It's just kind of an overview, not just of this week or this day, but also kind of the year and my life in general. So we start off at the top with daily dashboard, word of the year, long-term goals, short-term goals, which I do need to update because some of these are have been accomplished like a year ago. I recently have added things like the Goldberg Center Certificate, which is a program through OSU for teaching. So that has been recently added, but like this, I need to update. And I paid off my car last year, which is very exciting. I still have not opened up a Roth IRA. That's been on my list of things to do for a while. So then we have this kind of main section. I truly don't know how many books for school I read last year. I just kind of guesstimated because this is a new edition. And then we have my yearly goals. I'm going to find a new quote because this is one that Kaylin Apple had. She's a big Anne of Green Gables fan, but I'm going to find another one that is more, more me. Then we have do this week. I have goals, which is for school. And then I also have personal to do's. So this week I need to finish grading discussion posts. I am TAing for two separate classes this year. And so this is gonna be for the History 1212 class. I need to start a new book. So we are going to say, finish reading Anzac Legacies. I did not actually write one grant application last week. I started it but that needs to be like a top priority. So we're gonna move that up and I did do that and I still did not do this. So we're gonna move this up to top priority. So I'm going to Austin later this week. So I need to check in for my flight. And then I started reading a new book called Less Is More. It's all about the environment and how the capitalist system is destroying our world so it's a very intense read but it's very interesting and then we have my perfect week so this is inspired by kaylin apple and it kind of has like what my ideal week would actually look like it's hard to stick to this all the time but it's a good kind of reminder of things that i want to do every day in terms of grading working on grant applications, reading, doing things for the Australia side of my project versus doing things for the French side of my project. And then we have, this is just things that I should do usually on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. So we can uncheck these as we have to start the week anew. And then we have just sort of reminders of things I need to be doing monthly, quarterly, and yearly. And then we have like an ideal ritual down here. So then next we have the My PhD kind of board and I watched a video that Holly Jane did. I'm gonna link her and Kaylin Apple below. And I learned how to do these like synced blocks. So now everything under My PhD is linked and anytime I edit any of these 
They are also on all the pages within the PhD section. So for instance, we have our dissertation planner, planner which has the running title for my dissertation. We have the abstract, we have sources, methods, scholarly intervention, themes. Some of these I filled in, some of these I haven't. Um, so this is gonna be really helpful for grant writing especially since I have everything right there to reference. And then if we go back, we have my different research trips. So this trip was this past summer. And as you can see, I need to get rid of my like to-do lists. This one, I had a map for where all my research was going to be. And then I had a board view. This is the archive that I probably use the most of recently because this is where I had all my allocation files. We have other links that are helpful to me. And I really like the setup of having all the links like the synced block on the side kind of makes it look like a website and everything is very easily accessible. So I have different tips that I've received on grant writing and then all the grants that I'm planning on applying for. Then under academic help, we just have general kind of sites that I found helpful over the years. And then we have teaching. So I have film suggestions, tips on how to write a syllabus. I am doing a seminar that just started. It's a four week long seminar on teaching while using writing. And I'm really excited for that. So I have all my seminar notes here that we are just beginning with. And then if we go back to teaching, we also have a few workshops that I've done for working outside of academia, which isn't what I'm striving to do, but I realized that I might end up having to do that. So I have that here. And then I'm also on the Graduate Student Advisory Committee, so I have all my notes for that here. And finally, I have my personal dashboard, which is really just a hodgepodge of things. Um, a lot of really random templates that I use, things that I would like to buy, planning for YouTube, wedding planning, so we're not really gonna go into that dashboard all that much, but I really like how I have my Notion set up right now in terms of the daily dashboard and then having the kind of dissertation side of things. I would say there's a lot of people on YouTube who use Notion for pretty much their entire life and I am just not one of those people. I do take some notes in there, like I said, for my research, I've been using that a lot, but in terms of reading books, I haven't found a way that I really like it. It's great that you can customize everything, but I feel like that's really overwhelming when it, when it comes to taking notes about books. I just want to have something that's super easy. So as you guys know, I use OneNote for this. So I'm gonna quickly show you what my OneNote setup is because I want you guys to see the full scope of my planning. So I generally start with a blank template for every book I read that has the categories, the place, the time period, the topic, the argument, the key themes, historiography, methodology, sources, and then some reviews if I choose to do some reviews. So one of the more recent books that I read was by a scholar named Elizabeth Nelson, and she wrote this fantastic book called Homefront Hostilities, which talks about domestic violence in Victoria, Australia, kind of prior to World War One, during World War One, and post-World War One. So I have here, didn't include an argument, but I have that a bit later on. The thing that I really like about using OneNote is you can highlight things super easily, but you can also star things that are important, which I absolutely love because it helps when I'm scrolling through to really identify the key points that I want to remember afterwards. So I lay out every chapter, keynotes, and then after I've gone through all my notes, I go back and reread each chapter to highlight things I think are important as well as star key arguments from that chapter and themes that I think are super important either to my own work or to the book itself. And using this template ensures that all my notes look exactly the same for each book. So the next book I read after the war, Return Soldiers, I still need to figure out some of this top part, but I have a little bit of the book left to read and sometimes I do that afterwards, but I have each chapter and sometimes I lay out things on the side, research questions that I have been inspired by my reading the book. And 
and as I said, I still need to finish this. This is the book that I was reading this past week. But yeah, I think OneNote is just super easy to use and I prefer it to Notion. Just to recap some of my favorite things about using Notion and my Notion in particular, I love that it's very customizable, but I'm terrible at coming up with things. So I honestly just have melded together a lot of different people's templates in order to create something that works really well for me. I like that you can include pictures and checklists and tables. I think in the past I tried to do a lot of habit tracking within Notion and that just gets super overwhelming for me. So I like just having tasks and goals for the whole week that I can check off instead of day by day, which I started to realize was really not the way that I should be using Notion. These synced blocks are a really great feature that I think is new and it just makes things even easier to plan and keep organized all in one place. But that is pretty much it for how I use Notion. If you guys use Notion or haven't been able to use it yet, haven't figured it out, I'd be shocked if anyone on here hadn't been using Notion yet. But let me know down in the comments. I'm curious what your habits are in terms of organization. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other questions, let me know. And don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can keep seeing more grad school content. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.